So today I'm going to talk about how to change your default shell on Linux or your login shell. And it's not a difficult process, but there's a few different ways to do it. And there's a few things to actually keep in mind when you actually switch to a different shell. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the first thing we want to do is actually check what shells we have installed and also what shell we're currently running. So this is a very simple process. Let's just jump into a terminal and see how this goes. So obviously I'm going to assume that you're running just a sensible distro. By sensible, I mean literally any distro. The only thing that's not going to have these utils installed is if you do like Linux from scratch. Everything else, we're just using basic utils so you will actually have everything we need. But if you're on Linux from scratch, I don't know why you're watching this. So let's just have a look what shells we have installed. So the first thing we're going to be using is a program called Chain Shell or CHSH. So if we look at the man page for that, then this will see what it does. So this option that we're looking in here for is this list shells option. So if we run CS, uh, CHSH, so change shell, dash L, we can see what shells we currently have installed. So bin slash sha, bin slash bash, user bin slash git shell, bin slash ZSH, and user bin slash ZSH. So I'm not even sure what this second version of ZSH is. It might just be bin slash ZSH stored in separate locations. Someone's probably going to tell me what that is in the comments, I'm not sure. But what we're going to be doing in this video is changing from ZSH, which I'm currently on, back to bash, and then I'll just change back. So there's another way to see what shells we also have installed. So we can actually look directly at the file that change shell is pulling from. So if we go cat slash etsy slash shells, this will list out all the shells that we currently have installed. So as we can see, there's a bit of extra stuff in here, but this ultimately will show us the exact same shells. So SHA, BASH, GIT shell, ZSH, and ZSH. So the next thing we're going to want to do is check which shell we currently have as our main shell. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually check what shell we are currently running. So I'd said that I'm running ZSH, but let's just check what it is. So we can do this with grep. So we're going to be grepping the password file. So we want to grep on my current user. You could write in your actual username or just use the user variable, which is assigned when you actually log in. So we'll use this instead. So slash Etsy slash password. So we'll run this and as we can see, I'm the Brody user and there's some other information here that I'm not sure about. We've got our home directory and then I've got my current shell. So instead of using the user right here, we could just write out my actual username. So like that. So either way works, it doesn't really matter what you do. Ultimately, they will give you the exact same result. So. Next up, we're going to want to actually change a shell. But before we do that, we need to actually install a separate shell. So I said that I'm going to be using ZSH. So if you're on Arch, you're going to want to do something like, I'll use the full version of it. So sudo pacman dash s and then ZSH, for example, or whatever shell you're using. So you install it however you would normally install your different programs. Obviously on Arch, we're going to use Pac-Man, but maybe there's a shell that we want to use that's in the AUR, so we could use something like Yay for that. If you're on Ubuntu, then you would use apt-get, or Void, you would use whatever Void has, and all the other different package managers. So make sure you actually install a separate shell before you try to assign to a different shell. I don't know what it's going to do if you try to actually set a shell that you don't have installed. It might just stop you from logging in. Either that or it will default to whatever your distro's default shell is. Don't try to do it though. I don't know what it's going to do. So just make sure you install the shell before you change it. Okay. So now there are two ways that we can actually change our shell. So we can use the user mod command. Actually, there's three ways. We can use the user mod command. We can use the change shell command. Or we can modify that password file directly. So we'll just go with change shell first up. So CSSH. CHSH, I'm never going to be able to say that correctly, the actual path to the shell. So if we look up here, I said that we're going to be changing to bash. So slash bin slash bash is what we want to change in here. Slash bin slash bash. And then on the user we want to change it on. So I'm going to be changing it on the Brody user. So I run this and then it'll ask me to actually put my password in. So we just chuck that in now. That'll change the shell. And the other method we can use is through user mod. So if we do user mod dash s, 
slash bin slash let's just go back to zsh and then as you can see here everything else is exactly the same so the only thing that changes is instead of using change shell you're using user mod so we try to run that and it's going to fail now i'm not going to say that you should do this but you can go sudo and just force it through now i'm not sure why it's not locking i don't know if it's just because change shell is still holding the shell typically you're not going to try to change it a bunch of times like this so it's not going to be a problem on a sensible use case, but we'll run this and as we'll see, that will then actually change my shell from bash back to ZSH. So password. So I would just recommend just using change shell because you don't have to run that with sudo to get it to work. We can see in here we're running on ZSH. If I just run that other command, so this one, just chuck that back because I didn't actually show you that it worked. I just kind of assumed that it worked. So I'll run that and as we can see, we are now on bash. So the other method that we can actually modify this with is by modifying this file directly. Now I wouldn't recommend this method because you might break something. So if you break something, you are gonna have a lot of problem trying to fix it. So don't do that. But because we like living on the wild side and I might as well just show you this method of doing it, then I guess we're just gonna do it. So the file we're editing obviously is this etsy slash password file that we've been grepping this entire time. So I run this and now if I go down to my user right here, so just find whatever your user is called. If you have multiple users, then multiple different user accounts will be here. But there's all of this other stuff on here as well. So there's this dbus here, which has this user slash bin slash no login. I will explain that in just a moment. But for now, let's just change this line. So the line we're actually gonna change is this line right here. All we're gonna be doing is changing this from slash bin slash bash to slash bin slash zsh. Now the reason, as I said, you don't wanna mess with this file is because if this isn't formatted correctly, we're not even gonna save this because I don't trust myself that I haven't modified anything else. The reason you don't wanna do anything to that is because if it's syntactically incorrect, you are probably just not gonna be able to log in and you're gonna to have to fix it through root, and that's just always a hassle. So I would suggest avoiding that method, but I thought it would just be a good idea to mention it and just have it there for completeness. So if you notice that your shell didn't actually change, it's because you're going to have to log out and log back in for it to actually make any changes because you are currently in your login shell right now. So for it to actually switch to a new login shell, you're gonna to have to log out and then log back in. Then once you do that, if you open up a terminal and you were to run this variable right here, so the dollar shell variable, run that and it'll actually tell you what your shell is. So that actually re-ran my shell. That's not what I was trying to do. I wanted to echo it. So if you echo it out, not actually run it, my bad. If you run it, it's just going to relaunch another shell. So we echo it. And as we can see, it says that we are on ZSH. So I did mention earlier that there's gonna be some problems when you switch between shells. And it's gonna really depend on how much you actually rely on your shell. So using a tiling window manager like I do, I have a heavy reliance on my shell. So my poly bar up here, all of this is then parsed by the shell for all of this like output to be up here. I live in my terminal a lot. I use a lot of custom scripts. So if you're like that, switching your shell is going to be a serious problem and I don't mean serious problem as in a bad thing. I mean, it's just gonna be a little bit of extra work. So if I just have a look in LF here, we go down to my RC files. So we can see that I've got my bash profile, my bash RC, and a bit further down, I've got my Z profile, ZMF or ZSHMF and ZSHRC. So when you switch from say bash to ZSH or you switch from bash to fish or bash to anything else, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna keep things like your path. So if you have a folder where all of your scripts are run and then you switch to a new shell without actually moving that into a new RC file, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna be able to run any of your scripts without putting in the full path. So all of my scripts, as you've probably seen in previous videos, if you've seen them, they're all in my home slash scripts folder. So when I switched over from bash to ZSH, I then couldn't actually use any of those scripts without putting in the full path. Now this is obviously not a problem if you switch over prepared, but there are gonna be some problems in your system, especially if you have a heavy reliance on your shell, if you don't properly prepare to switch. So I would recommend before you switch from bash to ZSH or bash to fish or 
ZSH to bash. It, before you switch any shells at all, make sure you prepare your RC files. Now, if you're living in a desktop environment, it's probably not going to be a big deal because a lot of that stuff is handled through other means. Like it's going to be parsed through actual programs and not actually passed through your shell. So in situations like that, you're probably not going to have a big problem. But if you have a heavy reliance on the shell, make sure you actually migrate stuff to your new RC files before you do any major changes like this because I ran through that problem. I wasn't sure what was going on with my computer and then I realized I am an idiot and completely forgot to move my path over so none of my scripts are running. So just make sure you do that so you don't get in the same trouble that I did. So I did say I was going to mention what that no login shell was. So basically what that is, is you can define a user to not be able to log in basically. And you might think, why in the world would I want to do that? And if you're a like typical user, you're not going to have any reason to do it. The reason that's there is for people who do things like system administration. So there might come a time where if you're doing like big systems administration, you don't want people to log in at a certain time. Say you're doing some like upgrades or something. You can then switch them to a no login shell and that'll stop them from being able to actually log in. And then if you want to show a message when they're set to no login, you can actually edit this file right here. So we'll just use NVim. I don't know why I keep going to write Vi. So Etsy slash no login. So if you put a message in here, I'm not going to be able to show this because obviously I won't have a graphical environment. But if you put a message in here and then try to log into a user that's set to no login, basically what that's going to do is then just not let them log in and then it will show them a message. So you can use this to show something that will basically say like, oh, there's system upgrades happening at, at this time. You won't be able to log in until X date. So as I said, typically not too useful for regular home users, but if you're doing systems administration, I've said that so many times right now, then that'll be something that might actually come and be interesting to you. So there's one other sort of method to change your shell. So you can temporarily change your shell for various programs. So say for your terminal, for example. So you may know that if you just run bash, that will then open up a bash shell. So if I write stuff in here, you can see I don't have my syntax highlighting like I do in ZSH. So this will just run a separate shell. So you can actually, in a lot of terminals, define what shell you want to run on launch. Typically what they'll run is just bin slash sha, which is normally just alias to whatever your current shell is. So in this case, it's set to ZSH. But if we wanted to change that for something like ST, for example, we can go into the config file and then go down to where it says shell. So as we can see in here, what it's gonna do is open up bin slash sha. So in this case on Arch, I'm guessing that must be alias to whatever your default shell is. So if we wanted to change that instead though, we could set this to say bash. Now I would have to recompile and then reinstall ST to be able to show you that. But if we did that, then we would be using bash within ST instead of using whatever our current shell is. So if for whatever reason you want to change that, like say for example, you have ZSH or bash for example as your login shell, and then you want to use fish as your shell within your terminals for whatever reason then doing that, you can do that and it's not gonna be a problem at all. So the only problem you're gonna have is trying to run scripts from your shell if you're using a shell in your terminal that's not POSIX compliant. I always recommend using a POSIX compliant shell but some people will make arguments against it. I've talked about why I like POSIX compliance in a previous video so I'm not gonna go into that right now though. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Down below I have got my library, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's where you'd go for that. I've also got all of my social links, so if you want to chat with me on any platforms, you can go there. And I've also got my support links if you'd like to support the channel. Obviously you don't have to do that if you don't feel like it, but any help will be really appreciated. And up on that corner I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.